this for a moment and just go into Final Cut. So we have just a, a simple edit here with a bunch of transitions. Um, in fact, let me make sure I'm showing you the right one. This is the pre-color. Um, all this footage was provided by Canon. Um, so there's a number of ways that we can bring the project in. We can just start bringing in clips into the Resolve manually. We can bring them in through an EDL or an XML. Um, so I'll show you kind of a couple different ways. Um, okay, so I'm gonna export out an XML from Final Cut. You're probably pretty used to this. Okay. We'll just talk louder. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> We'll just put this to the desktop for now. Okay. All right. So let's hide this down. Let's go into Resolve. So, um, and in fact, let me just start from the beginning so you can see how it is when you um, get introduced to the program. So let me say where we're at. Let's quit this. Okay. Let that quit. Let's launch this. Um, by the way, if you're not familiar, there's actually a free download that you can, you can go to uh, Blackmagic's website and start experimenting with the program. Uh, the, the only limitation really is that you, you'll see that the way that it color corrects, that it's in a node-based structure, it limits you to two nodes. So it's, it's good though enough to just get your feet wet and get experience with the program and then you can merge that into the full version program um, or bring it up to even you know the Linux side program that uh, allows you to scale the hardware even more. But um, So here's the interface. You're greeted with your users and I'm just gonna select my user and we are now in this configuration tab. So you have your user list. Your different configurations consist of almost like easy setups in Final Cut of all these settings that you want your project to, to contain. So um, within there, you have a bunch of under, under the hood settings, auto save, um, and so forth. Uh, next to that is the browse bin, um, and this is where you have access to, can you, oh no problem. Um, you have access to your storage. So if you wanted to simply just start bringing in clips into a project, and you know, just getting started with, uh, with experimentation, you can do that, just drop them in here. Um, and in the conform page, this is where you can bring in your XML. So I'll show you how to bring in just a simple XML. We're gonna load, and I'm gonna point to the XML that was on our desktop. In fact, I, I'm gonna first set up a session. So let's do that. Let's call this. better? Can you hear me? It is on, isn't it? Okay. Can you up the volume up there in the booth, guys? Maybe I'll try to talk closer into it. Can you hear that better? You can try that. Is that better? Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna create a new project, call it XML. Thank you. Okay. So now let's, let's bring in an XML. I'm gonna go to load. I'm gonna locate our XML that's on our desktop, and I'm gonna bring that in. So you're greeted with a few, a few dialogues here. It's just basically asking where, do you wanna automatically bring in the project settings that you had in Final Cut? and do you wanna automatically um, import these into your media pool instead of bringing your clips in uh, prior to that? So we're just gonna click okay. And we have our project ready to edit. You can see if I zoom this out, it mirrors the timeline that we had in Final Cut Pro. And with Resolve 8 now, you have a lot of editing ability, so in case something doesn't translate, correctly or it does, but you have, a, have to make um, edit changes later on after color correction, 
you can come in here and you have your typical slip, slide, roll edits. You can add clips that um, you know maybe a visual effects artist is working on, and you're going to add them later on to the to the timeline. Um, so that's that's one way of of working, and it's pretty seamless. Uh, I'll show you another way where you can work. Um, so we'll just bring in. I'll show you how to bring in an EDL as well. So let's go and add a new project. Okay. Now for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the quick time that I'm going to use for the EDL to, to give it its cut points. So I'm going to locate where my media is. And let's go down here. And I'm going to click the file that I need and add it to the media pool. So as you can see, this is just a fully baked QuickTime with all the transitions. Um, and now I'll use my EDL. Let's go to. And it's going to ask what you want your session to be called, so we'll just leave it Resolve Demo. And there you go. It's it's the difference though now is that instead of in an XML, you can work in your layered base. Um, you know, timeline, whereas this, the transitions are actually baked in because I baked them in in, quick, in uh, the QuickTime. So there's just different ways of working as far as how you want to approach a project. So um, why don't I come into a loaded session and then I can show you kind of how the program works. So this is actually a, a, a colored session, and um, that kind of covers bringing in projects, but uh, this is, the color tab is where you're going to actually do all your work. So in here you have your viewer tab, which will go out to your monitor. You have a stills tab, which um, stills are just reference points that you can use. So say if you want to um, uh, compare one shot to another, you can, you can load that here as far as grabbing a still of this frame. Um, you can then also use the, the, the color decisions that are with this still and apply it to another shot. So if you wanted to copy and paste, you can, you can do that from any of your stills that you have loaded into this gallery. Um, next, that is the, is the node structure. So this is actually where you're, you're creating your looks for your, for your, um, for your image. Um, so what I can kind of do is show a um, sort of deconstruct of what like a grade would look like so you can see how that occurs. Um, I'm just gonna scroll this over and um, I'll just start disabling some of these just so you can see where I started out as. And let me roll into this a little bit. So that's our base. This is how the shot was recorded. Okay. Well, <laughs> typically, what's 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 happening is that uh, a lot of the the digital cameras now record in in a raw mode. So what you're doing is you're recording to capture all the highlights and the shadows in your file, and then you're using a program in 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 your post production process to then define what you want it to look like later. So that's that's why it looks so flat, which is very similar to the days of you know scanning film, what you would get, and then do your your color correction. This is off of Area Alexa, okay, and this is all um, ProRes files that I'm I'm working off of here, and it's recorded in in uh, Log C. That's why it looks so so flat. Um, that's. That's correct. In in it's recorded in log C. So basically, the, what's being recorded off the off the sensor of the camera is this very flat look. And what they'll do on set is they'll have the camera go out through a LUT that basically mimics what the final color correction will look like, so that the directors and the producers on set can look at where where they're ballparking their final image to be. So um, 
that's, that's sort of how the whole process works. And I can even, the program allows me to bring in those LUTs so that if I needed a cross check, what they intended for the shot to look like, I can bring those in and use them as a reference point and then judge how they want to go with the, uh, with the color correction. So a LUT is a lookup table, and basically it's, you can think of it as metadata. So um, it's, it's just kind of like color points that, that define where your, your, your final color is going to look like. So um, that can be called up at any time. So it, what I can do right here is I can pull up a LUT specific that, say, like that I got from on set, or I can get it from, in this case, uh, DaVinci gives you um, a predefined area Alexa log C to 709. So that, basically what that's doing is it's going to put your image into HD's color space. So it's basically going to pull out m the majority of that flatness that you're going to see right there. And you can then color correct on top of that, you can disable it, or you can uh, color correct along with it. Um, let me just give you a version I'll show you. So, so right there, it, it's, it's mimicking, um, it's, it's converting log C over to, to rec, or HD color space. And um, if I advance a little further so you can see the shot, as you can see, I can still grade on top of that if I needed to. It hasn't clipped any of the information, meaning none of your highlights have been have been uh, taken away or your shadows are still there. So, um, you know, if you, some people may want to start with that LUT on and, you know, save yourself the time of dialing all these dials to get to where you want to go. So, um, go back to this and I'll show you kind of my method of working is I start out with a base grade. So, I'm just going to, I'm just going to enable some of these so you can see how I got to from point A to point B. So right here, um, let's see. Well, here we'll just start from. I'll I'll just go through the process as I do it, so you can see how it happened. Okay, so um, and I'll try to use the mouse as much as I can, and not the panel, so you can see what the panel is actually doing. So right here, I'm just gonna uh, first start out with bringing out some the waveform monitor, so I can see a visual of what the video signal looks like. So really it's, you know, very simple stuff you might be used to in, you know, Final Cut's three-way color corrector. We're just basically wanting to first establish, you know, our contrast. So I can bring this down and bring my, my highlights up. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. Let me undo that. Yeah, and then maybe Matt bring down my midtones, and um, from there I'm going to add another another node to stack on top of this. So um, I'm going to go about let me lower this so you can see, and let's do this. Let's just add a serial node. So that's basically just any decision I do in the program is contained to this first node, and now I'm working on another node. So it's basically a layer based. You can almost think about it in, in Photoshop terms where you're doing some sort of adjustment on one layer and then you're stacking and, and, and mixing them to get a desired effect. So um, from there, I'm just gonna maybe boost the saturation a little more. I'm gonna take some of the, the green out of it, kind of warm it up. and sort of get it to our final p place, which is, let me go back to what I had. Which is something like this. So basically what I was doing there is I was doing a base grade and then grading on top of that and getting it to the point of right here. But um, one thing I noticed in, in this shot, um, let me disable this, is, um, is that I was losing some of this detail in this tree, which you can see right there. So what I wanted it to do as the shot was going on, um, let me play through this. Is I wanted to contain 
the detail that I was that I was losing that tree. So what I did was I did a mat right over that section, and then I used the tracker so that 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 layer stayed along that that layer. So if I come over to you, I can kind of show you that a little bit more detailed in the viewer. Let's turn this on. So as you can see, all right, let me jump back over here. So as you can see, if I go to the beginning of the, or play back from that, you can see that that is now connected to that tree. And um, the way I'm using doing that is with the 3D tracker, which is actually one of the most powerful tools in the system, in my opinion. Um, I can show you that a little bit further on another shot here. Let's go. Let's go into this one. I'll play through this. forward a little faster. So what, what I wanted here was to really contain what I was doing to this subject on her face and then everything around her face in a, in a different layer. So um, as you can see right there, I brought up her face and I, bought, I brought down the surrounding area. But in order to save you the, the heartache of keyframing all this, you can use what they call the 3D tracker. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And um, once I have this window here, I'm just gonna hit the track button, which is on here, forward. As you can see, those it plotted those points and, and, and followed her off screen. Um, that simple. And uh, all these controls here give you, give you options that um, you, know, you can modify that it track if it's not perfect. But I'd say about 95% of the time, it does a great job of, of tracking along your subjects. And Exactly, so if I, if I turn this on, enter interactive, these are all the points that it found that it, it wants to automatically track to. Now, I may not want all those points, so what I can do here is I can come in here and select these and say delete, because maybe those points are throwing off my track somehow. Um, or I can insert those. Say maybe I want it a little bit tighter to her forehead, I can insert some more points and make it more precise or less precise, depending on what you want. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. And then, as you saw with this shot, if I play back in reverse, you see that it panned from, from down below. So her face wasn't actually starting out on screen. Um, so you obviously wouldn't want to start tracking at the top of the shot from, from this point. You probably want to do it from the center, is what, is what I did. So I came to a point where we saw her forehead, or her whole face, tracked forward, and then I came to this point and went back, and now I'm tracking in reverse, her off screen. So now, now we have our full movement all the way through. And uh, with a little bit additional keyframing, I can make sure that that track goes all the way off at the beginning of the shot and then comes in and goes all the way out. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. And, and uh, typically with all the different power windows that you do on a particular shot, you're using this and it speeds up it really allows you to do really detailed work that you can't really do with just a three-way color corrector.